what is up guys i'm back with another video um so recently a lot of people has been asking me about the build and how i pretty much set everything up and how i got this thing to run so today's video is just going to be me explaining everything i'm going to have all the part numbers and the links down below yeah so let's get started on the description of it so basically this is a cammed 5.3 uh, with pretty much all LS1 parts. It's a decent setup right now. I'm still working out the kinks of it, but the ECU is a Holly Terminator X Max, and I have a 4L ADE transmission. Um, a lot of people are questioning how I got the 4L ADE in without any cutting. As you can see, this is a stock tunnel. Stock tunnel, I didn't cut any of the pinch welds. I didn't cut the cross member didn't do any of that so a lot of people has been asking me because nobody knows how to do it so basically i'm getting ahead of myself i'm gonna talk about that part later anyway so i did not cut the cross member for this setup at all i didn't do any cutting of any kind to the frame none of that so i'm gonna start off by mounting the ls as you can see it's on stock chevy mounts with a three quarter inch spacer below the bottom mount you can kind of see it there also have an adapter plate and actually the top mount is different it's not a stock chevy mount it is some uh brand of mount that i got on uh, amazon and i basically made fit it works pretty much with the stock mount. I just had to shave like the side of the mount just a hair. But that bolted up just fine. Uh, at first I was having issues because the, the pin was hitting the, the, the cross member, but I ended up using those three quarter inch spacers. So with that said, you have to use the LS1 oil pan. LS1 oil pan will make that work. Um, pretty much all LS1 accessories. I believe this is a truck alternator though. So if you look, here's the part number right here. Hopefully that's clear. I'm trying to see if y'all can see that. Right there you can also see it's 105 amp alternator, right? It's a LS1 water pump, which I might have to change the thermostat because the radiator is not flowing. Um, LS1 intake. This is a G plus, something like a little off brand throttle body, which it works fine. Um, it's 102 millimeter, by the way. So stop. This is stock LS1 fuel rails that I flip because if you know for 64 Impalas uh, for stock fuel stuff, it's on this side. So I flip the fuel rail around and I have this hose coming off of it from down. Stock truck ignition coils. Like I'm pretty much I'm not going to say this is a budget build, but it's a driver quality build. I wasn't trying to go for no show car. And don't worry, I'm gonna clean up all this wiring anyway. Um, this radiator right here is a Champion Triple Core Radiator. I think it ran me like two or 300 bucks, but it's really good, it works really good. I have this dual fan setup. I believe they're 12 inch dual fans and they mount up pretty much in a stock location. If you look, uh, I have just one long bolt going through on both sides uh, through the bottom radiator mount uh, Yeah, as you can see it's really really close down here It's not touching, but it's really close But this is a non power steering setup, so I don't have power steering But if you think about it this setup for the accessory drive was set up for power steering. I end up doing the delete right here because I don't need power steering at the moment. And whenever I'm ready, I'm gonna get it. So uh, 
This radiator, the part number specifically, was a non-power steering setup because with the power steering setup, it will have a notch in it right there for the actual uh, gearbox. This has a Texas Speed Bald Eagle cam in it. Uh, 227 234 I think 600 lift and duration with a 111 lobe uh, angle separation so uh, yeah really hardest parts about this build was trying to get the positioning of the actual uh, motor and transmission correct because you want to sit in perfect for that transmission that was like the main key of actually doing that so transmission it's a 4L80E with a 2700 rpm stall because of the cam and uh it's all stock all stock trans and as you can see i have a b&m shifter it's not finished setting up but i mean it, it moves it moves on its own i just don't have like the top end parts set up for it um so i used a lot of people's asking me about the trans cross member because they can't figure that part out or they have to fabricate one i actually found out that you can use a 4l60e mount for these cars because people make them aftermarket and there's a little tab on it and you can cut it off and put it to the other side. You can you can flip the tab over and it will actually mount for the 4080E. It'll, it'll be close, but it, it mounts. Also, you're gonna have to use a spacer to like lift up the back end of the engine and the transmission to bring it up. It's gonna be close down there. I didn't even get like have to cut the e-brake out. Like literally everything is stock, everything mounts in the factory stock position. If I wanted to go back to my power glide and the 350, I didn't have to change anything about the the cross member or the uh, the trans cross member or the engine cross member. So yeah, like I could really go back to stock if I really wanted to, but uh, you know, of course, I'm not going back. Um. So this is like I said, the dual fan setup. And I also have it set up on the ECU, so whenever it hits operating temps, they come on. But I also have it on a switch. Because, you know, sensors tend to go out and stuff, and I'd rather be safe than sorry. So, as you can see, I have this switch right here. If I turn it on, ignition's not on all the, anyway. Like, I can take the key out, and it's still, you know, going on. And that's because I want it to be cooling, you know, as I'm sitting here. So if you look, both of these are working just fine. Uh, they're both pulling. They're not pushing. They're, they're going the right direction. So, uh, yeah. I have that set up like that. Here is my Holly Terminator X Max ECU. If I turn it on, it's right here. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty much getting everything set up right now. Um, the biggest headache about this build was, in fact, the drive shaft. The drive shaft and the headers were the two biggest issues I kept having. Because of the foil ADE coming from a power glide, I pretty much had to get a custom drive shaft. I basically have the stock draw shaft and it's a what is it uh so basically the draw shaft is the it's the stock two-piece draw shaft for this thing uh didn't change the rear end didn't change the yokes well i mean i got them replaced but still still stock yokes and the actual slip yoke for the foil ade i got that put on to the uh to the uh to the draw shaft so the issue with that was I could not get the correct link to save my life at the beginning. So the first time I went to go get the draw shaft cut, you only cut the front uh, piece of the draw shaft, not the part that's connected to the rear end because the center bearing distance won't change from the rear end. The only distance that changed 
it is from the transmission to the first piece of the uh, drive shaft. So the first time I ended up getting it cut, I ended up getting it cut three inches and it still wasn't enough because I couldn't measure correctly because the yoke wasn't on the drive shaft, all that type of stuff. So yeah, I got it cut three inches and that still wasn't enough. So I had to send it back, pay more money and get it cut another inch and a half. So in total, I got this thing cut four and a half inches and it has the new 4080E yoke on it. Uh, fuel setup, fuel pump setup. Um, I have a C5 Corvette fuel filter. Let's see if I can get down here. I can't get under there right now. The car's not lifted up or nothing, but uh, I'll just drop a picture right here. So it is a C5 Corvette fuel filter with the uh the actual sending and the return line on it and then it also has the uh actual my fuel pump is like a war war barrel uh 110 fuel pump so at the moment overview 53 480e stock rear end i cut the draw shaft four and a half inches and put the 480e yoke on it a 90 Silverado uh, gas pedal with a low car uh, actual throttle cable, 102 millimeter throttle body with also a, a adapter slash spacer right here because I think this is a four bolt and the stock LS1 uh, intake is a three bolt. So it, it fixes that. This at the moment is just temporary because I don't like the way it's sucking up a lot of hot air right here. So I'm not even gonna speak on this. Uh, Billy aluminum accessory drive with a stock truck 105 amp alternator. Has the, the power steering delete uh, accessory drive kit. Stock truck, stock truck uh, crank pulley. Uh, what else? Pretty much. So these are some stock, some stock EV1 injectors. And whenever I look on Holly, I cannot find these injectors with this number to save my life. Uh, stock EV1 injectors with stock LS1 fuel rails. And uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not a crazy setup radiator champion radiator i will put the links for all of this stuff below uh dual fan setup it's really close but not touching the uh actual gearbox i have this catch can right here uh, if you look the the throttle the throttle body the air is coming from here for the cold like the fresh air and it's going into this valve cover and then the dirty side for the uh, actual catch can is coming from the intake and also this uh, valve cover right here. So, yeah, this is honestly a simple LS1 4080E setup. Like, it took me a lot of research to get all this figured out, but yeah, it, it works just fine. Also, this right here was from the stock 350 that I had, uh, like the alternator stuff. Uh, I think the only thing I had to do for this alternator, I had to cut just a tiny bit off of the uh, off the back end because I couldn't get that in and off because of this little piece of the valve cover. But yeah, Holly Terminator X Max setup. Uh, it pretty much is like self tuning itself. Catch can 4080E. It's on a let me see if I can get under there for the bracket. Can't really see it, but I'll show you a picture of the actual setup that I have for that. Uh, battery is some generic Walmart battery. Cables, I don't remember the actual length of cables, but that's not too hard for y'all to figure out. Yeah, so uh, not too bad, not too bad of a setup. I'm not too sure how much horsepower this thing might have. No clue. It's just a cam, pretty much LS1 at this point. 706 heads. 
and pretty much stock ignition and a pretty decent sized fuel pump everything on this thing is functional uh, alternator works stock GM one bar math these headers I just found these headers and they came in clutch the actual lines for the for the 480 the trans lines as you can kind of see them down there uh, they're they're still braided and they go all the way up to the radiator I believe they're 70 inch and they fit perfect like almost no room to spare perfect and it the, the kit comes with everything so you will see all of that but um yeah a lot of people have just been curious about the whole setup and it wasn't too difficult to put together it just took a lot of research and everything oh yeah by the way with these with these uh motor mounts i've heard if you use six cylinder motor mounts that if the uh, the motor will sit a little bit taller i don't know how much taller you really need it to be honest because the transmission was so tall that i had to flip the actual mount bolts for the the actual shifter i had to flip them around because they were hitting the the top of the bell housing so uh yes it is close to the the trans floor like the trans tunnel is really close but it fits did not have to cut any pinch welds did not have to cut the cross member did not have to really fabricate a cross member i just cut the tab off re-weld it on the other side and it works for like flawlessly goes in a stock position and mounts up to the stock position as like a stock power glide the motor is uh, on a stock small block chevy mounts and i have the adapter plate so uh yeah you can move the motor back and forth with that so yeah it was a pretty decent setup honestly i'm gonna clean it up don't worry all the wires everywhere i just want this thing to be functional and running correctly before i started doing all that okay so to run the 5.3 with a foil ADE, uh, I had to go with some like flex plate. I think it was like a, a foil ADE flex plate with some like little spacer adapter. It came in like a whole kit. I'll put the link to that as well. Um, yeah, that the cam, that whole thing came with a kit. The kit was like I think 700, almost 800 bucks for the whole cam kit. Came with titanium retainers. Uh, new valve stem seals came with springs uh what else by the way this alternator it was kind of weird trying to set it up so there's this one wire that's the little indication wire to the light which i also have hooked up it works uh i just got this thing from a junkyard and uh have this main wire hooked up from like the actual old style uh unit or whatever and i pretty much have this whole ecu and stuff intertwined with the stock uh with the stock wire harness for this car but everything pretty much works how it's supposed to uh the jam light comes on and off whenever the alternator is working and not working uh fuel pump it works it's hooked up to uh the ecu and also my accessories on the actual ignition so it primes up and everything as well so yeah pretty much the whole thing is set up like i was supposed to these are like stock solid mounts for uh, ls it's not they don't have the rubber the rubber piece on them or nothing like that so yeah it, it works good it works good for me and it's everything i'm looking for so yeah by the way the oil filter on this thing was super weird i had to get a 07 plus silverado oil filter because when you order an ls1 oil pan it comes with that new adapter piece for the oil filter that was one thing that i could not figure out to save my life so you have to use a 07 plus silverado oil filter with the ls1 oil pan I'm not running a mat sensor or a fuel sensor it's kind of difficult to run that anyway because i flipped the fuel rail backwards so it'll be all the way back on the other side um yeah the coolant crossover i just have the front end one i have the little block offs in the back and it runs into 
this piece right here when you get a truck style accessory drive like this it comes with these little adapters and i can put it right down there i have to figure out how to have this thing not pinched but that's for a later issue but pretty much everything on this thing functions the dipstick the trans dipstick i have as you can see small spacer in between i have some of these going through like stock holes as you can see and like these stock little little uh hold downs for like wires and stuff um i have to drill a hole like about a two inch two and a half inch hole for all this stuff to go through but other than that pretty much all this stuff really works uh this thing it works perfectly as far as i know i have not driven this thing a lot on the road i literally only drove it once so far but it moves under its own power uh i have a picture of that set up like i said i'll have links down for everything dipsticks uh so i kept running into dipstick issues because of the headers uh at first i was using generic s10 ls swap headers and the clearance to the spark plugs is not cutting it for me it was working but i just i could not stand it like you have to take off the whole thing just to replace the spark plugs and i was not having that so i end up going to stock ls3 headers and the clearance for that was a lot better but the only issue i was having was the collector down here was hitting the frame so it was not mounting flush up top so i end up having to scrap these and uh a lot of people was telling me after i like bought the other ones that you can cut the flange off and like re-weld a new flange or whatever so if that's what you choose you go ahead and do that i'm not dealing with that so i got these uh these are like an off-brand hooker headers but i mean they work absolutely flawless flawless i have my spark plug clearance like i can get down there and take them out all that it does not hit the frame on this one don't hit the frame uh what else as you can see i just made my exhaust yesterday i'm gonna go down here and i pretty much welded up everything have the o2 sensors it's hooked up to my old exhaust eventually i'm gonna change out everything but for now just so it's not as loud i have that hooked up to that battery is in stock location that's what i love about the setup i didn't have to change anything stock location of the battery uh the accessory drive it's an aftermarket accessory drive but it's all billet aluminum I'll drop the link down below for that. I actually had to get two different setups because I wasn't using power steering. Luckily, they work perfectly with each other. Uh, so I didn't have to use the power steering. So I got a little power steering delete. Works perfect, everything. And I also wanted to clean this motor up by having a catch can. So I have this Moroso catch can that was for uh, uh, 5.3 LS and of course, the mounting spots was different because I'm not using like stock accessory drive and whatnot. So honestly, I just threw it right here and it works so far. Um, yeah, so at the moment, it's a stock LS1 oil pan and I was having issues at the beginning because I was using different headers and manifolds and everything. Those LS3 manifolds does not work with the stock LS1 dipstick and uh, I, I kept running into issues, so I bought this low car dipstick for like 90 bucks. And turns out with these manifolds, I can just use the stock LS1 dipstick again. So I'm about to return this because I don't know about y'all, but $90 is a lot, you know? So pretty much all this stuff, I use either adapters or spacers to make this fit. Everything is sturdy, motor is sturdy. Um, I just did not want to have to start cutting on this frame because like I like the ability to have to like if I want to change this out if I want to go back to stock on this thing I could right now with nothing like no problem only problem I would have is the draw shaft and if I really want to I can get a stock draw shaft and it'll fit just fine so dipstick was a transmission it was a transmission dipstick from like low car I think it's like off-brand low car trans dipstick um yeah like it's kind of hard to beat this setup 
I have the B&M ratchet shifter set up for the transmission. I did not want it on the column, so I threw it on the floor. Um, that's all set up. Like literally, I can go through the gears right now. Matter of fact, let me show you. So that's reverse, neutral and drive, and then three, two, one, and go all the way up. One, two, three. So all that works just fine. And uh, right now, the exhaust is a two and a half inch. It's not super loud. It's not super quiet. I think it's all right. I just kind of, I'm not really a huge fan on the tone. Then again, this is like a stock style exhaust that this thing came with. Uh, like I said, 102 millimeter throttle body. A lot of people were asking about A lot of people were asking about the uh, the gas pedal because you can't use the stock gas pedal in these. So what I did, I went to the junkyard, I went out and found an old 90s drive-by cable Silverado, which this this gas pedal also come in a couple other things too. Let me get my light on. Uh, so if you can look, I have, I think, like an inch spacer behind this thing, or like three quarters of an inch spacer. I can't really remember. And then, if you look at the top, oh man, come on here. If you look at the top of it, right in here, I cut the uh, top of it off because it's like some like weird U shape. I flip it to the side and threw the the low car drive by cable in there. And it works just fine. Like this thing works perfectly. I got all 100% of like throttle positioning. So uh, that works good. Yeah, I think I explained everything. So I think this will be the end of this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anybody that's trying to do it. LS swap might give them some tips. Also, uh, please let me know what you think. and give me some questions to answer in these comments all right see you guys on the next one